the Jack Benny program, presented by Lucky Strike. Friends, every time you light up a Lucky Strike cigarette, you get more real deep down smoking enjoyment. Yes, that's exactly what you get from every Lucky you light. For to make certain that Luckies are a smoother, lighter, more deeply enjoyable smoke, Luckies pay more for fine tobacco. Millions of dollars more than official parity prices. Remember, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And L.S. MFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine tobacco that guarantees a milder, truly finer cigarette for you. From first puff to last, Luckies are mellow and smooth smoking. There's never a rough puff in a Lucky. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke the smoke that's famous for fine tobacco. Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, usually at this time, we take you out to Jack Benny's house. But right now, Jack isn't home. He's on his way to the studio, and Rochester is driving. Gee, it's a beautiful day, isn't it, Rochester? It sure is, boss. The sun is so nice and warm. Maybe you ought to stop the car and put the top down. Oh, boss, let's not put the top down. Why not? There's so much trouble taking down the center pole and pulling out the pigs. <laughs> Oh, yes, I forgot. This is the new one I bought at the Army surplus store. Yeah, the flap still says Field Headquarters, General Bradley. <laughs> yeah. You know, Rochester, I was thinking that now might be the time to trade this car in. I read where the price of the Maxwell is going up. Boss, that's coffee! Coffee! <laughs> Oh, 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 yes. Well, in that case, I'll keep the car. But, boss... Never mind, there's still plenty of mileage in this motor. Well, if we're going to keep it, let's at least convert it to gasoline. <laughs> they keep having these cold strikes, we'll have to. <laughs> anyway, Rochester, I don't want... Oh, stop the car, there's a red light. <laughs> Gee, look at the big crowd on the corner waiting for the bus. Hmm, all those people at 10 cents apiece. <laughs> I could get three or four of them in here and... No, no, the last time I did that, I had to hold a baby on my lap. The mother didn't have any change either. <laughs> Well, I... Rochester, why don't you drive on? The light turned green. So did the motor. It died. <laughs> well, start it. Start it. I will. I will. I'll pull out the choke, turn on the ignition, then get out and kick it right in the transmission. <laughs> Rochester, just step on the starter. Okay. laughing. It's not funny. Go ahead, Rochester. Step on the starter again. Just a second. I'm connecting this loose wire. Okay. Say, Mommy. What is it? Is that car one of those new Buicks? No, no, son. The Buick has holes in the hood, not in the tires. <laughs> hmm. Then, Mommy, what kind of a car is it? I don't know. It must be a foreign make. Madam, it's not a foreign make. This is an American car. Not so loud. I want my boy to be proud of his country. <laughs> Look, madam. Now, come on, Whitney. We've got to go. Mommy, I think you made him mad. He's throwing coal at us. <laughs> My, that's a strange way for General Bradley to act. 
Rochester. Rochester, what's taking you so long? Get the car started. Yes, General. Stop saluting and let's go. <laughs> yes, sir. I've got the wire fixed now. I'll step on the starter again. <laughs> Chester. <laughs> now start the car. I don't want to be late for rehearsal. She started, boss. Once more, man triumphs over machine. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, Rochester, when we get to the studio, I want you to wait for me. After rehearsal, we're going out shopping for a Thanksgiving turkey. Yes, sir. Hmm. What's the matter, boss? We're just thinking, with my luck, if I go out and buy a turkey, I'll win one on Crosley's $2 million giveaway. <laughs> Well, here we are at CBS. Drive right into the parking lot. Wait here, Rochester. I won't be long. Yeah, da dee da dum, da dee da dum, da dum, ba 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 ba. Well, look who's standing over there, Ed Wynn. That's a beautiful new Cadillac you've got. Ed, that's not a Cadillac. It's my Maxwell. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, I've been in television so long, everything is out of focus. <laughs> <laughs> no? Oh, yes, yeah. Anyway, Ed, I'm glad I ran into you because I want to tell you your show is certainly one of the finest things on television. Oh, thank you, Jack. <laughs> I don't know. I, I hardly think it's that good. <laughs> oh, Ed, stop being so modest. I don't know. Gosh, television. It certainly is a far cry from the first time you and I played the Palace Theater in New York many years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget that, Bill. There were you, uh -huh. me, uh -huh. and Al Jolson. Al Jolson? <laughs> Whatever became of him anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's doing all right. He changed his name to Larry Parks, and he's in pictures. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> he just finished a picture called Jolson Sings Again. Oh, is that so? Well, I wouldn't know about that, Jack. No? The only pictures I ever see are the ones with my son, Keenan. Keenan, um, Keenan, uh, what's his last name again? Wynn. Oh, Wynn. Wynn, that's the one, that's the one. <laughs> yes. Keenan Wynn. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that silly? Yes. I know that name just as well as I know my own. <laughs> yes, well, I gotta run along, Ed. See you again. Oh, just a minute, Jack. How would you like to be a guest star sometime on my Spidell television show? Me on your television show? Mm hmm Gee, I'd love it, Ed. Any time at all. Oh, thank you, Jack. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Ed. <laughs> She's a wonderful fella. Such a great comedian, too. I don't know when you compliment him, he's so modest. Well, I better hurry in the studio. Da 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 dum, da 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 dum, da dum, bum da 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 dum, da dum. Oh, hello, Mel. Hello, Mr. Benny. Can you use me on your show this week? Oh, for heaven's sake. Haven't you got work yet? Well, I was supposed to be on with Ed Wynn last Thursday, but he's so absent minded he forgot about it. I know what you mean. I was just talking to him about our old days at the palace and. Would you believe it, Mel? He didn't even remember Al Jolson. Nah. <laughs> oh, quiet! Wish that Mel would get a new routine. It's amazing how a guy can support a wife and 14 kids on just... <laughs> oh, well. Oh, oh, hello, Don. I'm, uh, Don. I'm looking at you. No, I, I, I didn't say, hello, Don, I'm sorry I'm late, but I ran into Ed Wynn outside and stopped to talk to him. Ed Wynn, oh, geez, a wonderful fella, isn't he, Jack? Yes, Don, I'm proud to say he's one of my dearest friends. Well, I don't blame you for being crazy about him. Did you see his television show last Thursday? No, no, I didn't, Don. Oh, what a shame. 
Everything Ed said was a scream. He's a terrific comedian. <laughs> yes, yes, Don. Wynn is quite funny. Now, Don, let's... Oh, Jack. What? Jack, you know, there's certain things Wynn does better than anybody else. In fact, he gets the biggest laughs I've ever heard anywhere. <laughs> Don, let's get on with the rubbish. Jack, last week he had the audience roaring during his entire show. <laughs> so what? Anybody can get laughs in television if he has a funny camera, man. <laughs> now let's get on with the rehearsal. Well, Jack, don't get mad at me. I wasn't the one who started talking about Ed Wynn. You were. All right, all right. Now let's forget it. Okay, Jack, but I just thought you'd be proud since you're such a good friend of American's greatest comedian. Oh. So now Ed Wynn is America's greatest comedian. Yes, Jack, I think he is. That's my honest opinion. Don. <laughs> Don, I don't know how much the Frank Sinatra show is paying you, but save it, fat boy, save it. <laughs> Understand? I agree with Donzie. I think Ed Wynn is terrific. <laughs> Do I hear a voice from the shallow end of the La Brea tar pit? <laughs> you heard me, Dad. I ain't speaking Portuguese. <laughs> hmm. So you also think that Ed Wynn is the funniest comedian in the world? Yes, right? he is the funniest. Present company accepted, of course. Well, thank you. I met me. <laughs> Phil. Phil. I don't know how much Alice is paying you, but save it, kid, save it. Now look, in order to avoid arguments, let's get on with the rehearsal. Well, that's just what we were doing before you came in. I'm gonna have my boys run through their number right now. Good, and I hope it's not one of those corn pone tunes you always play. Oh, no, don't worry about that, Jackson. This week, I'm playing a tune from South Pacific. Well, from South Pacific. Well, I'd like to hear it. All right, give it to him, fellas. A one, two, three. <laughs> Phil, that's... <laughs> Phil, that's from South Pacific? It ain't from Stromboli, Roberto. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Phil, all right, I won't argue with you. To you, that's from South Pacific. If you want to play it on the program, play it. But at least do me this favor. Just for a change, have the boys in your orchestra look presentable. Now, wait a minute, Jackson. What's wrong with my ensembling? <laughs> All right, we'll start off with Sammy, your drummer. Look at him sitting there, way up above all the other boys with his big, bald head, <laughs> shining out in the audience. <laughs> now, I know he has a toupee. Why doesn't he wear it? He thinks one to a show is enough. <laughs> hmm. Any more complaints, Quigley? <laughs> yes, but I haven't time for it now. We'll hear your band number later. Let's have the commercial, Don. Don, is the quartet here? I thought you were mad at me. I am. But we've got to have a commercial. Now, what have you got prepared? Well, we've been working all week, and we have a wonderful arrangement of the Raymond Overture. The Raymond Overture? Don, that's much too heavy for a comedy program. Well, I guess you're right, Jack. Of course I'm right. And anyway, you're not in the mood to play the violin. No, I... My violin? There's a part in this... Overture for my violin? Yes, but you're right. It's too heavy for a comedy program. I said you were too heavy. <laughs> and the Raymond Overture is perfect for our show. Where's my violin? Under your arm. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Are you ready, boys? Mm. All right, now, wait till I tune up. Now, just a minute till I get my violin. All right, boys, let's have it. The Raymond Overture. LSM MFT. More independent tobacco men smoke lucky strike. Luckies are made of that mellow tobacco they like. Luckies pay more. Luckies pay more. Pay millions more. Is this where I come in, Don? Smoke a lucky 
Those heavy numbers are great for the show You know, sometimes it's good Oh, hello, when... Jack Sorry I'm late Oh, oh, that's all right, Mary You know, I'm always on time I, I really feel awful when I'm late like this Mary, I, I told you it's nothing Forget it I would have been here sooner But I ran into Edwin <laughs> Gee, he's funny Look, Mary Either be here on time Or don't come at all <laughs> What's the matter with him? Oh, he's mad because a lot of people think Ed Wynn is funny. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. Are you jealous again? What do you mean again? I never get jealous of another comedian's success. Go on. You're still sending poison pen letters to Buster Keaton. <laughs> Mary, please. And once Margaret O'Brien got a laugh on the Lux show and you went around telling people she was a 60-year-old midget. <laughs> Mary, that's it. No, now, this has gone too far. Now, now, wait a minute, Jack. Let's get this straight. Just because we work for you, do we have to think you're the greatest comedian in the world? No. No, Mary, no, you don't. This is a free country. And one more crack like that, and you'll be the freest gal. <laughs> <laughs> Now, let's drop the subject and get on with the rehearsal. Uh, Dennis, what song are you going to sing? Well, Jack, Dennis isn't here, remember? You gave him permission to go to Philadelphia to play a benefit. Oh, yes, I forgot. I wonder how he's doing. Well, I got a letter from him this morning. Would you like me to read it? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Dear Mary, I arrived this morning in Philadelphia after a wonderful trip on the Super Chief. My luggage is coming in this afternoon on the El Capitan. And tomorrow, my music is coming in on the Constellation. <laughs> Boy, did I get mixed up in Kansas City. <laughs> you know, Mary, it's a funny thing about that kid, Dennis. When he's here, I wish he were someplace else. And yet, when he's someplace else, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> now, what else does he have to say? Uh, Philadelphia is noted for a lot of things. It's the birthplace of the Declaration of Independence. It's the birthplace of Benjamin Franklin. And it's also the birthplace of America's greatest comedian, Ed Wynn. <laughs> hmm. Mary, I thought I'd just mention that because it would burn Mr. Benny up. He's always been jealous of Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> Read me that part again where Dennis says he's in Philadelphia. It makes me feel good. <laughs> well, Jack, there's more to the letter. Tell Mr. Benny that since I can't be on the program this week, I'm sending over Larry Stevens. Larry Stevens? Well, where is he? Go open the door. Mary, why tell me to open the door? I'm not telling you. That's what's written in the letter. <laughs> what? See? Tell Mr. Benny that since I can't be on the program this week, I'm sending over Larry Stevens. Go open the door. Well, that I can't understand. <laughs> but... Hello, Mr. Benny. Larry! Larry, 
the most peculiar thing happened. Dennis wrote in his letter that he was sending you over for me to open the door. How did he time it that well? He's had me standing here for five days. <laughs> oh, well, come on in. Thank you. Well, hello, hello Larry. Mary. Hello, Mary. How you, Don? Well, Larry, it's been two years since we've seen each other, hasn't it? Yes, sir. In fact, the last time I saw you, you were headlining the bill at Low State, New York. Yes, sir. Are you here on a vaudeville tour now? No, sir. Jack, right now, Larry's the star of the show at the Oasis Club here in Los Angeles. Isn't that right, Larry? Yes, sir. Some dialogue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Is that all you can say? No, sir. But Dennis warned me not to get any laughs. <laughs> Wait a minute, Dennis? Dennis warned you not to get any laughs? Yes, sir. Well. Who warned you, Mr. Benny? <laughs> Look, Larry, Dennis sent you over here to sing, so let's have it. Okay. Good, Larry. It'll be fine on the program. Larry, have you been doing much radio lately? Well, no, I haven't, Mr. Benny, but I, I have a little television show. You have? Well, that's wonderful. Oh, thank you. Someday I hope I'll be as big a star as Ed Wynn. <laughs> Larry. He's the funniest comedian. Nobody ever... asked you. <laughs> if you think that he's such Jack, a... Jack, Jack, let's finish the rehearsal so we can all go home. Well, I like to get over with, too. I got to go downtown, buy a turkey. Buy a turkey? Yes, I'm going to buy a Thanksgiving turkey. What's so surprising about that? You haven't paid for a turkey since you chipped in with the pilgrims. <laughs> chipped in with the pilgrims. Chipped in with the pilgrims. <laughs> Mary, I don't know how much they're paying you at the Burbank Theater, but save a gypsy. Save it. <laughs> now, let's get on with the rehearsal. Don, where are the scripts? They haven't come down yet, Jack. Haven't come down yet. Oh, for heaven's sake, give me that phone. Oh, Mabel, what is it, Gaichin? <laughs> Mr. Benny's line is flashing. Yeah, I wonder what all the king's money wants now. <laughs> I'll find out. Hello? Yes, Mr. Benny, your wish is my command. What does he want, Geitchen? He wants I should call the mimeograph department. 
Seems they forgot to bring down the script. Script? Well, how do you like that? And Mr. Benny told me that when he's on the air, all his jokes are ad-libbed. <laughs> ad-libbed? That's a hot one. One Sunday, it was time to go on the air. He couldn't find his script. And for a half hour, all that came out of him was, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and whiff! <laughs> and for an encore, he had lived another what? Ah, <laughs> oh, you're just jealous because the last time I was out with him, he kissed me. Well, if you want to have careless lips, that's your business. <laughs> <laughs> but it's my duty to warn you that kissing breeds germs. Well, you don't have to worry about me. Mr. Benny ain't kissing anybody with germs on their lips. How would he know? With his bifocals, he can see them. <laughs> anyway, I'm surprised that... Operator, operator, Gertrude! I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, the mimeograph department doesn't answer. Well, I'm waiting for my scripts. The least you could have done was to call me back and tell me. Don't yell at me! Who do you think you are, Edwin? <laughs> what? Hey, Mabel, he's ad-libbing again. <laughs> Oh, goodbye. Jack, what happened? Ed Wynn. Ed Wynn, Ed Wynn, Ed Wynn. That's all I've been hearing all day. Jack. You, Phil, Don Gertrude, all you know is Ed Wynn. Jack, don't get excited. I'll run up to the mimeograph department and get the scripts. Well, you can get the scripts if you want to. Pass them out and rehearse them by yourselves. I'm going home. Ed Wynn, Ed Wynn, Ed Wynn. You think there was nobody else in show business? Everybody has to make a big thing out of it. Hello, Jack. Say, Jack, don't forget you're going to be on my television show soon. Listen, Wynn, I wouldn't be on your show for a million dollars, you big ham. <laughs> what? Look at him trying to add live. <laughs> He's the world's greatest comedian. I'm Buster Keaton. <laughs> Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... When Lucky Strike goes to the tobacco markets, they have you in mind. Your deep-down enjoyment of smoking. And that's a big reason why they pay more for fine tobacco. Yes, friends, at the tobacco auctions, Lucky Strike pays millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. For you see, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Today, tomorrow, always. You'll know this is true with every Lucky you like. For here's smoking at its finest. Smooth, mellow, deeply enjoyable. There's never a rough puff in a Lucky. And like you, veteran tobacco men, experts who really know tobacco, choose Lucky Strike for their own personal smoking enjoyment. In fact, a recent survey reveals that more independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen, smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. So take a tip from the experts and smoke that smoke of fine tobacco Lucky Strike. You'll get more, much more, real deep-down smoking enjoyment with every puff, every pack. Yes, friends, make your next carton Lucky Strike. Uh, go ahead, Jack. I don't want to. Jack, don't be childish. You've got to. I don't care. I'm not going to do it. Now, Jack, you're being ridiculous. You simply have to do it. Now, go ahead. Oh, all right. I want to thank Edwin for being on my show today. There, I said it. Goodbye. <laughs> Good night, folks. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned in for the Amos and Andy Show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. 